Before I get into this presentation, I'd like to thank Jimmy Wells for having the idea 10 years ago to create Wikipedia and to actually carry through and assemble a team to do it. The lecture that follows is based on a page on Wikipedia. What I'm doing here is kind of an experiment. I think we can very productively combine information that's already amassed on Wikipedia with lectures like this conducted by college instructors like me to provide a different way of learning that has the extreme advantage of costing nothing in terms of published materials. Take a look at this. I'd like your input. I'm also putting up a page like this at the end of this presentation just to remind people that there's no free lunch. Wikipedia is a nonprofit organization and the people there don't make a great deal of money. In fact, many of them donate their time. They run a very efficient website and to keep this wonderful resource available, it would be a reasonable thing for people who make use of it to contribute financially to it. I do, and I'd also encourage you to donate to whatever extent it might be possible for you to do that. I think all of humanity benefits from making knowledge and information available in the very convenient way that the web provides. Take a look now at the experiment that I'm conducting here to tell you about the compression of visual images using the JPEG format versus quality. I think you'll get some very useful information out of this quick talk based on a page from Wikipedia. I'm doing a little experiment here. This is a page from Wikipedia that I think is very useful for you to understand. Instead of extracting it as text, I'm actually going to do a lecture with it right here on the screen. What we're going to explore is the detail loss that occurs as a JPEG image is given a higher and higher compression ratio. What you're going to see here first is a little bit of text at the top of the screen. It isn't so important for you to read that. I'm going to summarize it for you right now. What we're looking at is an image that has about 73,000 pixels. And this would take about 219,000 bytes, that is characters, to store. Let's just take a look at the pictures themselves. The quality number here is the same number that you see when you use the GIMP photo editor and you specify JPEG as output. That 0 to 100 scale is this quality value. So at quality 100, we're not compressing very much at all. The 219,000 bytes shrinks down to 83,000 and we're getting a compression ratio expressed this way of 2.6 to 1. That is 2.6 units of something compressed into one unit of JPEG. And this is the way the compression is usually stated. Now let's move down the screen just a little bit. Here you see a much higher compression ratio. The storage has dropped to only 15,000 bytes from 83,000. That's quite a bit of compression. We may see some artifacts, that is things appearing here that were not in the original picture. Let's go up just a bit. Here at quality level 50, we see that a great amount of shrinkage has occurred. This would transmit much faster, although at today's internet speeds it's not really much of a factor involved in the presentation of the image. 15 to 1 compression ratio. This is about as far as it's recommended that people go in compressing images for JPEGs. Given the fact that there's a lot of variety in this kind of a picture, most of us wouldn't be able to tell much difference between this one and this one, especially on a web screen, because it's not going to be as precise as a print image would be. But we might start seeing some funny colors creep in as the compression distorts the reproduction of the image. Let's go down a little farther. Here, we're at a much higher compression ratio, but we haven't saved that much space, 15,000 bytes down to about 9,500. We're losing a lot more in quality than we're gaining in terms of space. And you may see that this one starts looking a little fuzzier than these initials here. By the way, I suspect that whoever composed these pictures went to a cemetery and found some headstone with the initials JPG on it so that uh, they could use it in these photographs. It's probably an actual headstone and I suppose it's uh, got something to do with someone who favors a different file format sort of like uh, looking at uh, RIP JPG. Well, be that as it may. Here 
we're losing a lot more than we're gaining and we're starting to lose resolution. Going even farther compressing this down to a quality level of 10 we get 46 to 1 compression. We're down to only 4,700 bytes to store a file that started at 83,000 and in uncompressed form was over 200,000. So we've really achieved a great deal of compression here. But this picture is starting to look very fuzzy. You see the loss of precision around the initials. The leaves and the variety of things here probably don't matter that much, but the edge here is starting to distort too and it's getting kind of blurry. And finally at the lowest quality level of 1, We've taken a picture that started out over 200,000 bytes and compressed it down to under 2,000 bytes. It's much more than a 100 to 1 compression ratio, but unless you like the artistic effect of these pixels and what they do to colors to make blocks of color, perhaps you like this sort of a artistic style. It uh, actually reminds me of some types of artwork experimented with by artists in the early part of the 20th century. Unless you are attempting that sort of an effect though, this would not be usable as something that you would display on a web page. This compression has lost way too much quality for the amount of space that it saved. This statement is kind of important. The medium quality photo uses only 4% of the storage space but hasn't lost very much detail. And the medium quality photo they're talking about is this one here, quality level 50. So keep that in mind if you use the GIMP program and your output JPEGs. Take a look at what you're actually getting for the quality level and you could save quite a bit of storage space in combination with cropping your picture and resizing it so that it appears at the size that you want it to be on the web page rather than transmitting it large and expecting the browser to scale it down. Between those two things you can achieve much faster web page presentation 